Hello farmers, welcome back to No Man's Land. Spring is here. Nothing came up for sale in the shop that was uh, like eye candy. Hell, let's put it that way. I mean, there was a few things I'm like, yeah, that'd be nice, but something we don't need, maybe in the future kind of a thing. So here we are in March, and the first thing we're doing is because there is a great demand for maple syrup at the maple syrup tent or maple syrup sell point, and we got a decent amount. Want to hook that up, please? Uh, we got a decent amount of maple syrup, so we're gonna go ahead and sell that. I think uh, it's like 1771 per a thousand liters or so. And I think I got a decent amount over here. I've uh, been taking care of the animals. Uh, we got a, actually a good amount of snow over the winter for a change. But luckily, woke up this morning and all the snow is gone, so don't have to worry about that at all. Let's go ahead and try to get all the maple syrup that we can. But today, the vineyard will be built. Um, that is the plan. So we'll be going up there. First thing, once we get done some of the things, I had to take care of the cows this morning. The cows ran out of water last night. Um, yeah, I don't know who was responsible for that. Uh, but, yeah, we were, they ran out of water, unfortunately. But uh, other than that, everything is going pretty good. Um, one thing I ha did try over the winter, because I had a little time, uh, people have been telling me about the sugar beet, cut sugar beet thing. Uh... They, they said, you know, make sure you got the sugar beet off at the sugar factory, all that. It has been. Uh, so the one thing I did was I went to the sugar factory. I turned everything off, deactivated everything. And, yeah, the cut sugar beet, to no, to my, not to my surprise, still goes there. So the majority of it anyways. But the majority of it goes there and a little bit goes into uh, the BGA at the fermenter. So, um, yeah, I just have to figure something to do the sugar beet. Uh, but also for the cows, uh, we are out of TMR completely. They're almost out of food. They didn't make it to March, but if we go into the moo cows here, uh, actually I should check on the sheep. Sheep need water. Uh, the chickens are sort of okay. The pigs are going to be fine forever, but the pigs are reproducing. Um, I should have some pigs in two more months or something like that. Uh, as for the cows, we got 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. We're up to 90 cows. Let me click on them. Oh, but you can see they're almost out of TMR. I got about 3,000 liters left. And yeah, now they got water. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> wow, they went through all that straw in one month? Ooh, they went through a lot of straw in winter. Uh, yeah, their health is down to zero because, well, yeah, we ran out of water. Um, but that'll be fine. Uh, the kind of good thing about seasons in Farming Simulator 22, unlike previous versions of seasons, and yeah, the animals don't... Uh, don't fall over when they run out of water or food. So, I guess that's a good thing. Uh, should get a decent amount of money here for the maple syrup. And then the big red barn's got to be full of stuff. Uh, that's been sitting there since... When did we last sell that? Like November? And here we are in March. I haven't sold anything. Uh, but we did run, up, run out of oats in the big red barn. So, that's pretty much done. Uh, I, I turned that off. So, no more oats be made out of there. But everything else needs to be sold out of there. Um, but I'll probably get that later because I really want to get started on the vineyard. I thought about getting the oats planted first thing this morning, but it's like, no, nope. um, I, I really want to, I really want to get to the vineyard, get that started. I was trying to find, someone made the comment before and I missed it and I couldn't find it. But I think they said if I put about, uh, $40,000 worth of rows down, two rows of that would equal almost like one harvester. So I'm just going to eyeball it and go from there because I don't know if they did it with precision farming on or off. You know, that could change a lot of things. But we can always change in the future if I don't like the way, you know, if the rows are too short, too long. And I don't know why I'm going to No Man's Land shop. I don't want to sell it here. It will sell here, so I don't want to sell it here. I need to be going to the tent shop. I just got my mind set on the vineyard. So yeah, so as for the sugar beet, yeah, I've tried turning... I turned off the uh, sugar cane, I deactivated everything on it, made sure everything was turned completely off, and put a load of cut sugar beet into the processor, top of the hour came, and like 24 out of the 25,000 liters went into the sugar factory. Should get a decent amount of money for this. Now this trigger here is just a little bit on the small side, so I gotta really sneak it in there. I have to turn the trailer around to get this side, I guess. So it's going to be kind of hard to see what we got. Well, I guess I can go to sales and see what I got for sales in the day. 
Because so far it's the only thing I've sold. Little by little we'll, we'll get it sold. I have not checked my environmental score, although I don't think it would have changed, but uh, maybe it has been because the fields don't, you know, have not been uh, reseeded yet. So maybe it doesn't see as uh, uh, direct drilled. Uh, now I'm a little bit too close to the tent. I just want to sell this maple syrup, please. It's all I want to do. There we go. All sold. Uh, I don't know where we're at, but we're now we're up to 557. Uh, let's see if I go to... No, that's the wrong page. Uh, where's that page? There it is. And if we scroll on down, looks like I got about uh, $20,000 worth of maple syrup. And miscellaneous. Oh, that must be my bonus money for the environmental score. Let's check on that because I really not have checked on it once we get... Uh, we're still at 98. So we're doing pretty darn good there. All right, let's go ahead and fold that back on up. Just want to get the maple syrup done first because that was at a great demand actually last night, uh, just before I went to bed. So I was hoping the great demand was still, still going to be there, but I woke up this morning and it was, so that's a good thing. Uh, the next thing we probably should do is grab ourselves a trailer, head on down. We're going to buy some silage and come up and dump it into our TMR mixer and get that up and going. Because the cows will need to be fed today. I could just throw in hay and they'll be fine, but uh, their production won't be at 100%. It'll be a little bit low with hay. But I think 80% wouldn't be too bad, but I'd rather just give them TMR if I can. And we got the money, so we're going to go down and buy it. I'm just trying to think uh, what vehicle I should use. Let's see, the T6 is not going to be able to haul it. I could use the forage wagon that's over here. Yeah, we'll just grab the forge wagon with the T6 because I can't put a whole bunch of silage in there. And I just need to get by for like another two months. I was going to say a month, but then I realized, yeah, the grass may be ready to be cut next month. But then I got to cut it, compact it, and wait for it to ferment before I can, uh, before it's silage. So let's go grab the T6, which is right here. Drop that off, and we'll actually pick up the forage wagon that's right over here. Go on down to the store. Let's see. Uh, I need to guesstimate how much silage the uh, TMR mixer takes. Uh, we got a lot of reds everywhere. That's mostly the BGA that's all red. Uh, we are. What are we out of? Uh, I'm out of eggs down at the donut shop. I can. We got eggs. Um, we can take care of that for sure. I just gotta find my TMR mixer. Uh, the values are different. Well, I think I'll just grab like uh, 20,000 liters. And we'll dump it in the TMR mixer and get that started up. And then we'll start buying a vineyard and maybe even an olive grove. We'll see how the money goes. Well, I ended up buying 30,000 liters because why not? Uh, probably going to need it, so might as well make my trips count. Let's go ahead and start this on up. Make sure we get some silage in there. And let's go ahead and activate this. Yeah, so it's going to hold like about 18,000. Yeah, 18,000 liters. So I got enough in there to last a little bit. Uh, so that'll be up and running and I'll have to be able to feed the cows here hopefully in a little while. Uh, actually, before we actually get going and start building the vineyard, probably the smart thing to do is actually sell the stuff I need to sell today anyways. That way I have all the money that I know we have. So that means grabbing the Mac Anthem, 
I'm going to go ahead and start selling all the stuff at the Big Red Barn first. All that goes to the No Man Land shop. So that's going to be quite a few trips here. We usually get about, what, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 ish uh, per trip. And I don't know how many trips are going to, it's going to be, but I'm going to guess maybe three trips. So I might be somewhere close to $590,000 might get done selling for the Big Red Barn. Well, just two full loads from the Big Red Barn. I got about nine pallets in here. Actually, it's all popcorn. And then um, I was thinking, okay, I got to sell one more item, and that is the sunflower oil from our sunflowers that we harvested last season. Those are ready to be sold, and the best price is at the No Man Land shop, so I might as well make my trips count. But, uh, yeah, we did get up to 50, uh, oh, sorry, 50, 583,000. Uh, the first load was, like, what, about 11,000, and I did not pay no attention to the second load. So I'm thinking, oh, okay, so the, I'm not getting as much as I thought I would. And then I looked up, I'm like, wait a minute, that second low was rather good, it looked like, uh, price-wise. So when I edit this video, video, I got to double-check to see how much I got in the second low, because it seemed like quite a bit. But here is all of our sunflower oil that we need to pick on up. Uh, I got to get a little closer to the stockpile that I got. So right now, 27,000 liters of sunflower oil. Hopefully I don't back up too close. I don't want to get any of the flour. Is that all the sunflower oil I'm going to get? Yes, it is. That's all we're going to get out of there. Sunflower oil does weigh quite a bit. I used to use the auto-loading trailer, the smaller one, and those wheels used to sink into the asphalt quite a bit. Uh, but this should bring in a really good chunk of change since sunflower oil right now is going for like 2100 per so yeah we're looking at over fifty thousand dollars worth of sunflower oil here plus the popcorn actually that's kind of a good combination if you want to well the popcorn's already made uh some <laughs> i guess if you had just the kernels you'd want to dip that in the hot oil to make popcorn but it's already popcorn Got to make the corners slow here because that's a lot of weight. So I was thinking, I, I think uh, I'm getting ahead of myself with the olive grove. I think we should hold off another year on that. Because I want to make the vineyard worth it. I don't want to just put down a small vineyard and not have it worth it. If we're going to put one down, we're going to put one down. Uh, but I'm not going to go to extreme lengths either where it takes me hours on end to harvest the field even though it might take me <laughs> that long I don't know I've only done this small olive grove in Elm Creek and that was maybe like five or six rows and they weren't that long of a row so we'll just say 59,000 with a bonus of 8,500 get, getting us up to $650,000 in the bank account so that is very very lovely indeed let's go ahead and fold that on up we're done with that all right i'm going to bring the truck back to the cow farm and just leave it parked there where i got it from and i think we'll grab maybe the fenton 1000 because that's down by the bga we'll drive up to the corner and try to plot out exactly where this vineyard is going to go but we kind of we know where it's going to go i just got to see if i can get my rows the way i want them to be there is my lovely pile of sugar beet plus the half million liters that we got stored into our silo over there and we're just going to drive 
right on over here. Get to the top of the hill. Uh, we can delete trees as we go. And we've reached the summit. And we'll turn that off. That's just to get us up here and give me something to teleport to if I need to. Right, let me come over to this tree first of all. Let me go ahead and put this lovely little thing in here. Delete objects on. We're going to get rid of this tree right here. That's gone there. The bushes, I don't know if the bushes will disappear when I put down the, the grapes or not. I right, was going to back up to here. All right. Uh, probably the first thing I'm going to do actually is go into here. Uh, let me turn off auto save. But I will save the game from this point on. That way, if you just something doesn't work out, I don't want auto save overwriting what I'm trying to do here. Construction, uh, production, orchards, and vineyards. Great vines, as they call them. See, I want to face this way here. Where does the hill actually kind of come to an end? All right, we're just going to start. Distance is too short. Yeah, we know. And can I turn around like this? All right, we're just going to go 10,000 per row-ish. And I like how they snap now compared to what it was before. Alright, so this is not that expensive. I mean, it kind of is, but it isn't. I mean, if you're talking early game, 10000 for a row that I'm putting down here. It's kind of kind of a lot here. Why can't I go? There we go. So I'm not worried about the rows being too long. So it's not going to fill up my my uh, harvester on one pass or anything like that. Make sure the price is the same, so we know the rows are the same size. Uh, this is so much better than um, when it first came out, and I did the olive grove. They didn't snap, and you kind of had to guess the distance apart, and the rows were never straight, but this is so much better. All right, so so far, it's not being as expensive as I was thinking it was going to be. Now, when I say get this built, I got to see what precision farming is going to want. I don't know if I can do soil samples on this or not. Because it's not really a crop you're putting in. It's an, you know, it's classified as an orchard. So, yeah, I'm not too sure. If it wants me to spread lime down, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess I can get one of the small lime spreaders and spread lime down. If it requires lime, have no idea. But we're about to find out. That's a dollar cheaper for some reason. I don't know if I'm going too much or not. I'm just like, yeah, I'll just keep planting. We'll go a few more rows here. All right, this will be the last row because I'll get us to 400,000. And let's have a quick look to see what we're doing here. I think that's a good start for the first year. If we want to add more on, we can 
later. But that is a good start, I think. Uh, if we come here, uh, no data found, so it does require some soil sampling. So, uh, since I'm very, very cheap, instead of doing the soil sampling myself, we're going to come over here and... Let's go ahead and purchase soil sampling for $2,100. That's it. All right, we can do that. All right, so the pH value is bad. The nitrogen says it's perfect. Um, not too sure about that. So, let me come into here and go to spreaders where it's been a while since I looked uh, where the spreaders were. I must have scrolled past it two or three times by now, I'm sure. Oh, fertilizer spreaders. That's where it's kind of going to be. Uh, which one does lime? Those are going to be too big to get down through there. So... Will, will the Breedle Spreader fit down the rows? I don't think so. Hmm. That is very interesting. It doesn't actually give me what the harvest value would be. So, like, when we go to another field... Well, maybe because the grapes aren't growing yet. Well, it says grapes growing, so... I'm not sure. I am not sure on that front at all. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> but we did soil sampling at least. It didn't affect my overall score on that lot, which is a good thing. Yeah, that Breedle spreader is not going to fit down here, I do not believe. Uh, to spread lime down. But the nitrogen says it's perfect, which I, I kind of dis disagree on that. But... Uh, we'll just leave that be for now. Uh, but we're going to come in here and actually we're going to go ahead and get ourselves our tractor. Now, there was a few things I thought about doing. Uh, I thought about uh, coming on down here and getting the DLC pack. I was thinking about getting one of the Tonys. Um, uh, the Antonio Cario pack is where it's from. I wasn't going to get one of the Tonys, uh, but I decided not on that. Then I got that, oh, let's get the Fent. But then I realized uh, we do have the Fent Vario 1000, so the Fent would be this one right here. And I'm like, wait a minute, we don't have the Landini. Uh, I think we may have, we're using the Landini on Elm Creek. But we're going to go with the Landini again. Uh, we are going to go with Metallic Blue. I may have done that before. Uh, let's go with the Michelin tires. I've already, I was already in here uh, peeking around with it. Uh, we are going to get the three-point leakage for the front. And we are going to get the bigger engine. So that gives us 112 horsepower, which I kind of want. And we want this... Um, the sensors so we can get the right fertilization on the grapes, I think. And the rim color, we're going to go with... Uh, not gray, that doesn't look good. Uh, we're going to go with white. And, of course, the plates. Uh, no plates. We're good there. So that brings us up to $80,000 for our small tractor. The Landini Rex 4120 GT is what we're getting here. Uh, the wheel setup, there's no, nothing to do with the wheel setup. We're just going Michelin tires, three-point link, uh, the 121, uh, sorry, the 112 horsepower. Uh, we got the sensors for crop sensing. Uh, and, of course, we got the paint job. Let's go ahead and we're going to buy that for 80000 And let's see. We're going to grab this fent here. I'm going to drive the fent down to the store. And I think... I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm not going to sell it just yet. Um, I want to make sure because we're going to come back up here with our Landini tractor. And we're going to put down some sheds. But seeing that I still got three hundred and twelve, uh, sorry, $316,000 left. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe actually putting down the Olive Grove. 
This little guy's got some pep, I'll tell you that much. So how much space do we actually get going down the rows here? Okay, so that's not too bad. That's a decent size gap on both sides, but I don't think the Breedle Spreader is going to fit down there. If I actually got to put lime down on it, uh, but I don't know how that's going to affect my overall scores in, in this lot, but right now, it seems all right. Speaking of seems all right, it's time to put down a shed over here. Let's see, that's where the vineyard is. We could expand the vineyard, like I said, in the future, depending on how much we get for a yield on grapes. Uh, since I don't know how much how we're going to do for a yield on grapes, uh, I don't know. All right, so we're just going to go in this back corner here. Let's go ahead and park this right here for now. Let's jump on out. And construction mode. Turn around this way here. Let's go to landscaping. Uh, flatten. Try to pick the high spot, which seems to be here. Going to kind of bury those trees over there, I think. Yeah, so it dips down here a little bit, but now we're at the edge of the map. get it up much up as we can and then come back to here to smooth it on out a little bit all right now we'll go to smoothing tool Even though I got it on max strength, it does take a while to smooth it on out, so we'll give it a moment. And actually, we're going to leave that just like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and eliminate the trees. There we go, and the rest are just all bushes. Uh, so as for sheds here, we don't need, I mean, the, the implements are not that big for this. So we don't need like any big sheds, but we will need a big shed for both the harvesters at some point. So, uh, sheds, well, I'm already on sheds here. Uh, we got a couple choices. Ooh, th those are expensive. Nope, we don't want ones that cost $350,000. Nope. Uh, let's see, we got the easy sheds. Uh, I like Ailey and Jim sheds a lot, but uh, let me scroll through here a bit more. All right, these are all the sheds I currently have. So, I think for the implements, I do like the looks of this shed here. I think we had this one on Elm Creek. That'd be a nice little shed for like all the small implements and everything. Let's not go too far back. There we go. There's that shed there. And then I probably will use one of Alien Jim's sheds for the two harvesters. So let's see. What kind of a shed do we want here? Uh, that's kind of like a wood shed. So if we go with a... Stone shed. All right, let's come over here and uh, just left click. All right, now we got ourselves a shed for the two harvesters. Um, the great harvester we probably will buy this year. Uh, I'm going to hold off on the olive groves still just a little bit, although I think we'll be fine. I do got plenty of months to do the olive grove, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go to the calendar. 
uh, grapes and olives, I can go all the way to June. Um, I don't know how late I can go before, because they, they will be ready for harvest in October. But that's just for making oil. That doesn't uh, get our progress along too much on the production line. We'll just be making oil with it. Uh, does this have lights in it? No, it does not. Not that big of a deal. All right, let me go ahead and grab our Landini, and we'll park that away. But at least I'll have a something to teleport to to get up here and check on some things. A little bit of a bump there. Seems like I lost my hat. I'm not wearing my hat. Uh, okay, so the next thing we need to do is now we need to uh, make a little bit of a road somewhere. So back into construction, landscaping, painting, and we just want regular dirt. So that's where the olive grove is going to be. Didn't really leave me a lot of space over here, now did I? So if we come down through here, I guess. And we should be right over at the BGA. Alright, yeah, we'll kind of go from this angle here. And let's see, we're kind of going with that sort of a thing. Uh, what I really just want to do is... Actually, no, we're going to go ahead and go right up to that field there. Because the BGA will be fenced off. So I'm going to run this road right alongside this field here. And any trees are in the way, I'll come back and... Do and delete later on. Now also in the future, if I decide to go back to a sugar beet or something like that in this field up here, I could always make more sheds up here and put a sugar beet harvester up here, but after seeing my little predicament with uh, doing sugar beet at the BGA, probably not, unless I completely get rid of the sugar mill. But we need the sugar mill for a lot of things. And yeah, that tree's gonna go. So we'll just kind of do a little bit like that. And then for now, we'll just wing this up here. And there we go, for the most part. The only thing I might want to do is maybe put a repair shop up here. And also a fuel pump. But uh, until something gets low on fuel, I'll worry about the fuel pump later on. And as for the workstation, I'm not sure yet what I'll do. And also a pressure washer I could put up here as well. But it's a darn good start. Uh, I'm just trying to think. So if I forego the olive grove, I might just put down a few more vines. Now that I can kind of see what I'm kind of doing here. It's starting to come together. But I think for the first season, I'm going to leave it right there just to see how, see how much work this is going to add. But it doesn't seem like it's going to be that much. Uh, but I gotta see about maybe getting some uh, some lime spread down here. 
I'm pretty sure there's a couple mods out there. I wonder if I grab... Let's grab the Landini. What is it? Alt-B to turn on the crop sensor? Yeah, Alt-B. But that's not going to do me anything because I'm not putting down fertilizer or anything like that. And also, like, uh, for doing weeds here, that kind of sucks a little bit because you can't use a spot sprayer for weeds, I don't think. I don't think that boom's going to go high enough. Yeah, it's a little bit bumpy through here, but it's not that bad. I'll have to get rid of some of these bushes. Now, as for doing fertilizer on here, um, I could do just a manure spreader because we got plenty of manure from the cows and the pigs are producing manure as well rather than using artificial fertilizer so we could just go ahead and do that um, I don't know how it works on precision farming with the sensors on there but maybe I'll take care of it just right not too sure but if we do decide to do manure up here what I'll probably do is put down a manure bunker and then we can transport loads of manure with a big trailer and then just dumping it up here. And then when I go down, up and down the rows with a small spreader, I just got to go and top it off up here instead of going all the way back to the cow barn. That is something for sure that we can look into. Go ahead and just park that up for now. But all the equipment that we kind of need for doing like the the work for the grapes all that equipment is relatively cheap so i'm not too concerned about it uh money wise let's jump back on down here i do want to see how much i'll get for uh let's go and repair for 768 uh value is only sixty four thousand. that's not enough and what i was thinking about was would be Going in and getting ourselves the 9R John Deere. But I think that's going to be put on hold. Until I know we're financially secure. Where is the 9R? There's the 9R right there. And of course I want to go. A little bit bigger engine. Uh, sure. Well, that, So that's going to be like 450. So that's right there. So it's going to be like a half billion dollars we kind of need. And that's where we fall way short on that. I don't need that big of an engine honestly. So if we get something relatively like what the Fent has, we're talking like 373 before I do any more adjustments on here. But just be aware, this doesn't have a three-point leakage in the front. And not like we've been using it, but we do have three-point leakage here, but no PTO shaft. So not that big of a deal. So I'm going to keep the Fent for a while. I was kind of thinking about maybe using it to plant this year, but... Not the fence, sorry, the 9R. So that's going to be put on hold. Not that big of a deal. Alright, so one more thing we need to do here is I need to teleport to... Uh, let's see, the McCormick would be good. Because we're already over here. Let's back on up and we got to grab our unloading trailer. And we got to bring a few things. I need to pick up the eggs, for one. I'll bring that on down to the donut shop. And then I better swing on over to the sheep and get all the wool that we have because it's getting pretty close to time for selling some clothing. So we got to make sure that's ready to go. Actually, I probably should have put the wool on first. Uh, I wonder if the wool will go on top of this. All right, tell you what I'm going to do. Put the eggs there. Let's go grab the wool and then put the eggs on top. If I go nice and slow, they load up nicely. I used to put the throttle down, and they wouldn't load up good enough, and I have to reload them myself. But if you go slow enough, they load up nicely. So, the rest of this month, we'll be planting our oats. 
Oh, you don't want to take the rest of the eggs? Well, I think you're going to. Uh, corn is in April, I do believe. But in April, we should have some clothing. Actually, I don't even know how much clothing. I haven't been over to uh, So What in a while to see how much clothing we got. But hopefully we'll have a little bit more. Since I'm bringing uh, 8,400 liters of wool over. But first stop, the donut shop. Since I got pretty close to 18,000 liters of eggs, I don't think the donut shop's going to take it all. We got one pallet of strawberry donuts, another pallet of chocolate donuts. And this pile of boxes or crates to my left is butter and chocolate from the Dairy Godmother. Let's see how the donut shop looks now. Uh, right here. Yep, so it's got all the eggs. Actually, it must be all butter that's there. Is that all butter that's here? All right, so the one thing I do know is that Bread Pit does need butter. So I may take some of this butter up there along with the eggs and top that off. Um, so you went through all that, uh, wool, huh? So we must have, I think the, so what, spawn six pallets plus 3,000. So we got 9,000 liters of clothing currently, uh, but I'm looking for bread pit. So, uh, it's almost full on eggs, but it needs butter. All right, I'll come back for the butter, uh, but I got to go sell these eggs somewhere. So I got to find eggs and find out where it needs to go. Uh, the price is terrible right now everywhere, <laughs> it looks like. Uh, let's see, Lord of the Wings, let's see, 830, 860 at the No Man Land shop. But I don't want to go there because it'll take the wool, I believe. So Lord of the Wings will get the, the rest of the eggs. So let's go to Lord of the Wings, sell the eggs. And then we'll go up to Tight Knit which uh, makes our fabric. We'll drop off the wool. And hopefully that gets all processed as quick as it can. Probably not all of it, because it's only one more month till April to sell our beautiful, beautiful clothes. And then I'll transport some of this, or all that butter, up to Bread Pit so we can start making some more cakes again. The cows are producing milk. Oops, I went right past Lord of the Wings. I was like, don't sell the wool. If, if Lord of the Wings takes the wool, I got questions. And the price is not really that great right now for eggs, but the eggs have been there for a while, so we're supposed to be selling those at least. So we're supposed to be selling perishable items every two months, and those eggs have been there for a little bit too long. Right, just sneak in here. Get rid of all the wool. Now that should produce about 2,000 liters of clothing when all said and done. All right, I'm gonna go back to the donut shop, pick up that butter that's just lying there, and bring up the bread pit, and we'll start making some cakes as well. Even though I don't think cakes sell that good in the spring slash summertime, but Money is money. On the way down, I was passing the sugar factory. I saw the, saw the sugar sitting there, and I started thinking, I bet you the donut shop is almost out of sugar, too. I checked, and yeah, we only got like about a 1,000 liters left. So, this should take all of the sugar. Dump off the sugar, take the butter. Uh, the rest of the sugar is not in the trigger. And if I could back up straight, it wouldn't take that long, but um, I'm having issues. So give me a moment. 
And whatever sugar doesn't take, I'm pretty sure Brad Pitt will be more than happy to take the rest. Okay, that looks a little weird right now, but uh, just, just close your eyes until I get up to Brad Pitt. And uh, we'll deposit that and we can start making some cakes. Yeah, so now we can get to, now that the uh, vineyard is, I think it's in, we'll see how much that produces. I will try to check. I, I, I don't know how that actually would affect your, your environmental scoring. So I actually have another field on that lot. So if I were to put that down to soil sampling, your, your pH level might be a little bit off because I don't know, really know if we need to spread line. And uh, what's the one I'm think, trying to think of right now? Um, oh, yeah, the tillage. Um, I don't know if that's going to be... And I drove right past uh, Brett Pitt. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, tillage. Is that going to be done from taking, you know, getting rid of the weeds or the grass growing? And I forgot what that's called now, too. Hang on a second. Uh, what's that going to be called here? It's been a while since I, I've done it here. Uh, mulchers. That's right. So is that going to be like mulching? And I don't know. Subsoil prepares fields for the next sowing. It can be used instead of a plow. This tool is suitable per suits perfectly for grapes and olive farming. So that's going to affect my environmental score because it's, I can't get the score up to max unless I do direct drilling. But I will be doing direct drilling on the lot, just not where the grapes are. We'll see what happens. I mean, overall, we're getting a really good bonus anyways uh, from, our, from our environmental score. If it takes a little bit of a hit, then uh, I'm fine with that. It's uh, part of the process here that we're doing in No Man's Land where we're trying to do everything. But even though we're going to be trying to do everything, I'm not going to try to do everything in the same season. So uh, that's why we're not doing cotton that much anymore because uh, we got the wall to do that. Um... I'm not going to try to get every product and every production building every every year because that would be just a lot, <laughs> a lot to do. But the vineyard is down. Uh, the money, you know, went down quite a bit. But the good thing about a vineyard is once you plant it, it's there. Um, you don't have to replant it every year. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I got to do some uh, some looking up a little bit, I think, to figure out do I really need to put lime down in that field or how's that going to work? And if so... Uh, what piece of equipment do I want to use to go down there? Because I think the Breedle Spreader is a little bit too big for that. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. But that's going to do it for today, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching as always. I'll catch you again right here in No Man's Land. But until then, have a good one. I felt uh, really good sleeping in my comfortable bed last night in the new home. <laughs>